not. I say, your brother said you cannot. I say, you want to go to deeper life. You of all people, you cannot. And I say, let them hear. Let the heavens hear. I can. I'm telling you, I can. I'm telling you, I can. The same soul that said you cannot, when you win and you conquer, it will say, whose boy is this lad? They will ask about you. They will question about you. When you conquer, you get to that final point. Everybody will be looking, who is this boy? Who is this girl? Who is this man? Who is this woman? What is he? How tall are you? I said, how tall are you? I said, how tall are you? You're like this? I will ask about your name. The people will ask about your name. That time when they see you, you'll be taller than you are now. I've not finished. I've not finished. You can sit down now. God, I must take you to the point you must conquer. Where am I taking you to? Where is Jesus taking you to? You will conquer in Jesus' name. Number one, car. Number two, tell me. Continue. We'll come to number three. You will conquer sin. You will conquer sickness. You will conquer Satan. You will conquer poverty. You will conquer oppression. You will conquer Goliath. Your day of conquering has now come today. Number one, the invitation for all to come. Number two, the identification of those who continue. Number three, the impartation on those who conquer. A spiritual impartation is coming upon your life. Power and authority coming upon your life. From today, if you make up your mind to decide to conquer, you will conquer in Jesus' name. They see whatever you decide is what you become. That's why you come tonight to this value of decision. You decide to come. You decide to continue. You decide to conquer. That victory, nobody will take it away from you. In Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In all these things, all those things that surround you where you came from, in the midst of all those things, as you make up your mind, you decide. The spirit of the conqueror, the boldness of the conqueror, the courage of the conqueror, the focus of the conqueror, and the single mindedness of the conqueror is coming upon you right now. You will not go back, you will not turn back. As you make up your mind and you decide to come. 
and to continue you. The next time I see you, I will see somebody more than a conqueror. All challenges that you carried brought to this place, all those challenges are gone. The guilt and the condemnation and sin that bowed you down, everything is lifted away. And the confusion, what will I do? What I'm confused, what am I going to do? All the crying and all the sobbing, everything is gone. You are a happy man now, a happy woman now. Jesus will be by your side. The Holy Ghost will be your comforter. God will be your heavenly father. Every mountain you will climb. Every ocean you will cross. Every challenge you will overcome. Because you are a man, you are a woman of decision. I come. I come. I come. I will continue. I will continue. I am a conqueror. Rise up. You tell the Lord. A man of decision. That's what makes it in life. A woman of decision. You are not dilly You are not up and down here and there. I'm not sure. Will I? Will I not? Make up your mind. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. You must take that first step. Have the forgiveness of your sin. Have the salvation of your soul. Respond to that invitation of Christ. Yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. In Jesus' name we pray. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You're making up your mind. If you have not done this before, that you solidly today, convincingly today, resolutely today, you are deciding to honor the invitation of Christ. Come unto me. Come out of your sin. Come out of that darkness. Come out of that idol worship. Come unto me. You are making up your mind right now. A great day of decision. Esbad and eyes closed. Just raise up your hand there. Something good will happen. Salvation will come to you. Eternal life will come to you. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Make up your mind now. This is final. I'm coming to Christ with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. Raise up that hand. Raise it up very well. Are you ready to pray? I can't hear you. Okay. Keep up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these, my brothers and sisters. These, our sons and daughters, as they make up their minds right now, say, yes, I've decided to follow Jesus. He says, come, I come. Lord, I identify myself. Here am I, Lord. I come out of sin. Eat your salvation. I come out of condemnation. 
I come with your forgiveness. As they raise up their hands, Lord, as they decide to come to Christ, forgive them in Jesus' name. All their passing, erase everything from them. Take everything away from your book of remembrance in Jesus' name. You said you will give them rest. Give peace to their soul. Give rest to their soul. Restore the backslider even now. Let the spirit bear witness with their hearts right now. That they are now children of God. Thank you Lord for the answer. Thank you for the salvation. Thank you for the rest in their soul. Thank you for the peace in their mind. Thank you for that eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Number one, I come. Say that aloud. Will you, will you continue? Will you continue? Or will you be like an unfinished building? I come. I will continue. Say that again. Say that again. Say it with assurance and confidence. Now I am a conqueror. Now you are going to conquer sickness. You are going to conquer paralysis. You are going to conquer every evil sin, every attack of the enemy tonight. Who will give testimony tonight now? The conquerors, the conquerors, the conquerors. You have a testimony in Jesus' name. Get ready now to conquer. You raise up one hand. You lay the other hand on yourself. Resurrection time. Supernatural power time. Raise up that hand. And lay the other hand on yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this night of conquering. I bring your people before you. I pray that every sickness will fall before them. All those evil powers and torments will fall before them. Lord, I come in your name. And I pray for your people now. Every sickness, every infirmity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All the swelling of any size, any type, anywhere, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Madness, insanity, epilepsy. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Fibroid, near. Come out in Jesus' name. All the pain, all the affliction in your body, I command them right now. Come out in Jesus' name. All the spell, all the charms, all the things the devil and 
agents of Satan put upon your body, I release you now. Be free in Jesus' name. I pray that every one of you will receive the touch of God right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be delivered in Jesus' name. I sent for the power of God upon everyone. You have conquered your sickness. You have conquered those evil spirits. You have conquered all those attacks. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm it right now. Set everyone free. Break every yoke. Destroy the works of the devil. I thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. It has happened. It has happened. It has happened. You are a conqueror already. You have conquered every sickness. You have conquered every infirmity. The pain is gone. The sickness is gone. Check up right there. Check up right there. Check up right there. It is done. Amen. It is done. You have got it. I say you have got it. Yeah, go out of that room. Yeah, what? Yeah, what? That swelling has disappeared. On top of the poor Adano. That swelling your body is gone. On top of the go out of that thing. Yeah, go out of that room. Check up your eyes. Yeah, what do you remember? Blind eyes are now open. Oh, you don't want to let it in. You can see where now. Oh, the Lord is not Encourage them to put their faith into action. Oh, yeah, and I want to let you see that. What is it? Yes, oh, yeah, I'm not today. Money, yes, what is it? What is it? Check up your body, yet you are. Yeah, what you are. Yes, my yeah, what is it? Yes, I can see that miracle over there. More it on, what is it? Yeah, what? Check up your body, yeah, go out of the world. Your neck that could not work, will start be, will begin to work now. Yes, Throw away your crutches. The word of God has gone out. The servant of God has prayed. You have received your healing. Death ears, ears have been opened. Check up your body. Yes, yes. God has opened your ears. Yes, yes. Only what is your tear is left. Dumb tongues. I have to tear the sorrow. But as in sorrow, begin to talk. Sorrow, get it. Those pains in the body, they have come. Yes. 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 He said, You are not to sell them, yeah. Explosive miracle. Oh, to two guys, the Sibe. Yeah, woo, yet, yeah, woo. Yet, or do I woo? If for number one, near Bagakene, a miracle has taken. He said, You are not to one, bay. If for number two, Nibber Kaji. By say, you are no rest. Yes, what is a lay? Begin to begin to check on my yaw, my yaw. Those people that have received their healing, bring them out. I want to take Basay and Rama Bonta. They are going to have testimony. I only are going to celebrate with them. I'll say, Joy, your last alley. Miracle has taken place. He said, You are not to sell it. Continue checking on my yaw, my yaw. In Hall number five, Neighbor Gacano. To my right hand side, Near Wall, Alafia, or Wall Tommy. Yeah, what you want, he said, Yano. Yes, I know to sell him. Explosive 
I'm from Hospital District, Ileife. It happened that on Sunday, while we are going out for publicity for this crusade, I was trying to connect something uh, behind the truck. As I attempted to, uh, to come down, I had a fall and had a serial and sustained a serial injury to my knees. I thought it was a joke. So we proceeded for the publicity. But by the time we ended the publicity, it was no more easy. So the following day, I had to go to the hospital. Getting to the hospital, the test was conducted. They said I had a fracture to my tibia. And uh, a lot of things were said that I was not happy with. And I was given a lot of drugs. Even people that said it, uh, some of them are in this crusade. And uh, they said I should go on with these crutches for some weeks. And I was given this knee brace. But I must confess, using the crutches are not, is not very easy. Even to walk a short distance with a, a lot of difficulties. But I thank the Lord that today, as the, the servant of the Lord was praying, he said we should do what we couldn't do. And at the end of the prayer, I was able to walk. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I want to love Jesus. He brought up the head that we healed by Jesus Christ. I said, what do you need? You don't have to use crutches anymore. Oh, Lord, you don't have to do the miracle. You don't have to do the miracle. I'm asking, who has done the miracle? Jesus has done it. It will be permanent in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ, you don't have to do what you want to do with Jesus. Next. Hello, me. Praise the Lord. This boy is Sunday Akin. He was staying very close to where my wife was working. He was born with wither hand. But he was standing by my side as we are praying this evening. All of a sudden, he was able to raise this hand. He was able to hold paper with it. He was just say, Ha, that is something has happened. Then I said, Come and give testimony. Praise the Lord. Alakuni Sunday Akim Luruko Renje, Oni Penija Dier, Latin by Bire, so more when we caco, Latin by Bire, to Boba T and Badra near Chalet. We saw it was a way ha, that dear war on me, only pray one Matisha Munka, pray one of Fimu Karatele, bet better she be money, yes, but I lay alone, Obacos on my year, or one of Tina. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Years, uh, for 30 years, you have been having this wizard hand. And the hands have been withered for 30 years. He was born like that. He was born with withered hand. 30 years ago. He was born with that hand. He was born with withered hand. He was born I want to learn okay, bye. Praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord has healed you. Only what you want, son. Jesus' name. Amen. Titi Lord, call Jesus. Amen. My Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. But I want to love Jesus, Christ. And it of Jeremy, and it be the other boom. My Lania Mummy, oh, you did not be a good man, did you? My Lala, would you call a long woman? But for what can we remember? 
Kanya for 50 years has disappeared. Lato doke dogo, ikwa to The swelling of Kanya 50 years has vanished out of out of his body. Odoke dogo ti a isanya ti wa mbe o ti koja o ti pura. The Lord has set you free. Oluwa ti tu asile. Praise the Lord. Eke alleluia. Kanya will not come back again in Jesus' name. Kone pa na wama lo ruko Jesus. And it will come. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. My name is Adejumolo Atosin from OAU. It ha what happens to me was that I have the case of breast lump for almost, let's say, six years. But I didn't notice, and I didn't notice, and I didn't count it as a, I didn't count it at all, and I, I didn't even have, as a, I didn't have any, I didn't have an idea of it. So it was, it occurred, it, it now sprung, it sprang out there on Friday. I was having serious pain on my two breasts. So I, there's one doctor in my uh, fellowship, I told him, I explained to him that this is what is happening to me. And he said I should come and meet him at a uh, teaching hospital on Monday. And on Monday, I went to teaching hospital. When I got there, they tested me. They, I went, to, I will undergo so many tests, and it was discovered that it was lump. So the doctor now said that it, it is a normal thing that, but uh, uh, it's a normal thing that what they can do for me right now is, is, is that I should make up my mind and tell them that I should make up my mind that am I going to, uh, am I going to undergo the operation right now as I'm, as I'm sitting, that they are going to book me up. So immediately when they said it, I said, and I confirmed it in my, in my heart, that by the, by, I, I, according to the word of Jesus that said, by his stripes we are healed. So I, did, I told the doctor that I have not made up my mind that this is my body. There will be anything called blade, nothing called, that, not, there's, nothing, there's nothing that will be called blade, nothing called operation. So I keep on to the faith. Everybody, I, some people that are here from before I went to the hospital, they asked me that what, what is the health come? And I told them that this is, what, this is what the doctor said. And I said, this thing, I'm not going to undergo any hospital, any operation. I called my mom that, please, this is what is happening. But I want you to have it. I want you to join your face with mine and, and, told, and, told, and tell God that this operation is not going to happen. I call my dad, my sister, everybody, they are so, they are so panic. That what, what, as in the operation, they are so panic of the operation. But to me, since then, I have that peace of mind. And yesterday, when I went to Face Clinic, the, uh, when I went to um, Power Night, what the, our pastor said, he said that we should, conf we should confess things and it will, be conf it will be established in our life. So yeah, that yesterday, I hold on to my faith. And today, and I'm gonna, since that Monday, I told God that since my pastor is coming here, that when I see, when I saw my, when I see my pastor, that I'm going to see my miracle. I'm going to see my, I'm, I'm going to see Jesus. So when, when I, I, I even came to the guy, to the, this guy, but I came late. So when I, when I came to the front, I saw the pastor and I know that since then, I believe that I saw my Jesus. So immediately after the prayer, I check the lump and there is nothing there again. And I know that there is, there is nothing there again. It's already Amen. gone and vanished. Amen. Amen. How many, how, how long has the lump been there? It has been there? It has been there for like six years. For, six for like six years. Six years, long cancer lump has disappeared. Amen. I love you, Ray. What is Toby Adumafa? Ti won ti ni iyanu ninu oyan won won lo si ile iwo san ni oba be ma won lo university won si fi dire mule wi pe lo to o na ni wa la yen wa nbe won ni ko ku inu wi pe o won si se abe o lo n gba olorun gbo wi pe olorun o wo won san o wa ati awon obi won gba adura o si ni igbagba o ni pe nigba ti baba wa tin bo wa si bi loni to n ba ti oju gan ni won se ya nu osele lowo lo ra eleyin adura lusaguta gba olorun ti wo san pata pata Oh, today, Mola, I don't care. Hallelujah. for six years has been removed. Koko, I have not done that. Allah, what you make of it? The mountain of cancer in your life is also gone in Jesus' name. Okay, dear, dear, go in my ear. What if Allah will call you? Next person. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go look at me, my sister. Can you hear me? Mudi, what do you think Allah will want to see? Allah will tell Allah to me. Oh my dear, could you mean more? Be that's it. That that's it. Be the baby in your share. I can't wait to go to that one. So I was trying to get that. See, let's say I'm long. What's the situation? I say yeti. 
ko ki le rin dada sugbon ni asale yi adu olorun fo wo kan ese yen o ti ni o ti gun to ra won so o le dada bayi praise the lord hallelujah ese ti ogun to ra won o ti gun dade pelu se yanu I woke up and down, and I see that it is still. You are walking up and down. Yes. And it was different from the way you were Only on Lopuna, and the Lord has straightened your legs. Oh, no, it's in West and Nato. How old are you? 14 years. Oh, my domain, I knew. What be so many money? Pay a second for Gunto Kaji. Which leg was shorter? The left leg. SLC, only for Gunto Ti Ae Oton. Sigmani, you see, maybe I did it. The two legs are equal now. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Discover Werther's Original Caramel Popcorn. Try it today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We worship you tonight. We come expecting. We come receiving. And we pray tonight. Every mountain will get out of the way in Jesus' name. There will be a manifestation tonight. There will be a demonstration tonight. There will be an empowerment tonight. Lord, you will move in a mighty way in every life in Jesus' name. Touch everyone and help us to lay hold on your word. As we touch you and lay hold on your word. 12 years of infirmity, 38 years of infirmity, long time standing problems. Tonight I confirm they are gone in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you briefly on God's explosive power today. You've heard he did it in Old Testament times in the Bible. He did in the New Testament in the Bible. The question is how about today? If you give God a chance in your life today, what are the limits of what can happen today as we pray to the Almighty God through the name of Jesus? The creator of the heavens and the earth. God will seem all things are possible. He saves, he delivers, he heals, he provides, he turns life around, he changes all things, all people. That God that changes not. We pray to him in the name of Jesus. Jesus, the unchanging one. Jesus, the Savior and Lord. Jesus, the healer and the deliverer. God changes not. Jesus changes not. The combination pray to the God who does not change in the name of Jesus that can never change. And we come in the power of the Holy Ghost that remains the same today. 
I'm reading to you from Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. It says, I am. That's all Moses had to face Pharaoh. I am. That's all Moses had to face the magicians of Egypt. Not I was, not I will be. I am the ever mighty, powerful one. I am. That's all Moses had to divide the Red Sea. The great I am that I am. The almighty one. The omnipotent, all powerful one. The only person that is never absent anywhere we call his name. The mission that knows everything there is to know. The great I am that I am. He's been going with the people of God from the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, and all through. And now we come to the end of the Old Covenant. And he wants to assure everyone the same power that had ever been remains the same even until that time. And he says, I am the Lord. I am Jehovah. I am the El Shaddai. I am the Almighty. I am the All Sufficient. I am the All Powerful. I am the Lord. And it says, Should anything whisper in your mind, is this possible today? Can this be done today? It says, And I change not. He comes to you with assurance. He comes to you with the confidence. He says, I change not. It's difficult for you to understand, I change not. But something should travel far away. And then you've been away from uh, our place here for a long time. And then you come back and you're wondering where you left your village. Where is the village now? Lo and behold, the ground is not there, it has not shifted. You come to the other places that you knew before. Your old, old alma mater, your school, old school. Behold, it's still there, there's no change. You look up, the sun is still there where it used to be. The moon is still there where it used to be. And the ocean, the seas are still there where they used to be. God says, come on now. If the creation that I made with my hand changes not, how about the creator? I change not. That's why I'm telling you today. Whatever challenge you have there, there is a God of heaven, a God in heaven that changes not. I am the Lord. I change not. And then he tells us, he says, that is the reason why the people of God, the children of Israel, are not consumed. As we have that in the Old Testament. Because Malachi, you find in the Old Testament, we come to the New Testament now, and I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. 
Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Have you read the story of Jesus? Everywhere he went, miracle power manifested. Have you heard of Jesus? He raised the dead. He saved the sinner. He healed the sick. He opened the eyes of the blind. He made the lame to rise up and walk. He cast out devils and destroyed the powers of Satan. He calmed the stormy sea. He fed thousands with a few loaves of bread. And now he declares to you that every miracle you have seen in Bible days, he says, Jesus Christ. Like you could have said Jesus without putting Christ. And we would have understood. He could have said Christ without putting Jesus. And we would have understood. He brought his name with his title. He brought his nature with his name. He brought his attribute with his authority. It says Jesus the one who saves. And Christ the anointed one that breaks every yoke. He brings his salvation and his deliverance together. His power and his authority together. His name and his nature together. And he tells you Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and he could have said tomorrow. But instead of saying tomorrow, he said, and tomorrow plus tomorrow plus tomorrow until today, until tomorrow, until next week, forever is still the same. That's why I come to you with confidence tonight. With assurance tonight. That something is going to happen to you. Are you blind? Get ready, something is coming your way. You're lame, you're on a stretcher, you're on wheelchair, you're on crutches. I'm telling you today. Everybody say today. Yeah. Something is happening right there. Yeah. God's explosive power today. And there are many things we can talk about when we're talking about God's exclusive power. Three things. Number one, God's excellent plan of salvation. God's excellent plan of salvation. In that word excellent, I could have said God exceeding plan of salvation. I could have told you God's excelling plan of salvation. Nothing to add. Nothing to support. Nothing to modify. Nothing to say this is absent. Can we adjust this? Is the excellent, exceeding Excelling plan of salvation. That plan is for you. I said that plan is for you. It includes you. And you will not be missing in the fulfillment of that plan in Jesus' name. Number two, 
God's explosive power over sickness. Any form of sickness, any size, any shape of sickness. Long standing has been there for a long time. Explosive power, explosive authority, explosive anointing. It comes from way tonight. And when we pray, you hear me mention the name of Jesus. All that sickness tonight will vanish away in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe. God's explosive power over sickness. And let me say some, that, that explosive power. You know, there are people who sometimes you're sick and you're getting well, little by little by little, gradually and slowly, gradually and slowly. That one is not explosive. Explosive is instantaneous. It is immediate. I say it here, explosion takes over there, all of a sudden, your bright eyes can see clearly, all of a sudden, your lame legs they receive strength, and then your deaf ears, I can hear, I can hear. When is that going to happen? I say, when will that happen? Tonight is your appointed time. God's explosive power over sickness. Number three now is God's expressed promise of satisfaction. God's expressed promise of sufficiency. That no matter where you are, no matter what the problem may be, there is a sufficiency of power here tonight that will bring satisfaction to every need of your life tonight. I congratulate you that you are here. You will never be the same in Jesus' name. Number one. God's excellent plan of salvation. The Lord knows you couldn't save yourself. How could you? You couldn't keep yourself alive. Neither can you bring yourself from spiritual death. Somebody has fallen into a well. And there is no ladder to bring him out. He doesn't have any wisdom, any strength, any way, any step to climb out. You need somebody outside that well to reach down in mercy and love and compassion and pull you out. You fall into the well of sin. You are doomed, you are damned. There's nothing you can do for yourself. Your self-effort cannot help you. Personal struggle cannot help you. But thank God there is a God in heaven. It's a God of redemption. It's a God of love. It's a God of mercy. He saw you where you were helpless. Somebody up there to help me. Somebody up there to get me out. And a voice comes from heaven. And he says, I am the Lord. Mighty to save. His salvation is available for you tonight. What you couldn't do for yourself. 
you cannot forgive all the sins you've committed by yourself. Neither can you cleanse yourself from the guilt of past sin. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever beautiful word, whosoever wonderful word, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I come to tell you tonight that the God of salvation included you in the plan. You can exclude yourself if you want to. You can say, no, I want to die in that well of sin if you wanted to. But the plan includes you. It's the plan of salvation. You will not reject it. It says, I'm the Lord, I will save you. I want to save you. I've done everything there is to do for you to be saved. He will save you. I said, He will save you. It was the major reason Christ came to this world. Why will the Almighty God send His beloved Son to this world? Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. There's an angel talking to Joseph. Here is a messenger from heaven talking to Joseph. He didn't understand. How could he understand that Mary the virgin was pregnant? As a just man, he was thinking about that. And then the angel came and brought the information from heaven. And she shall bring forth not a daughter, but a son. And Joseph could tell how true that will be. Just a matter of months. And when the son came forth, Joseph could reflect. The angel said so. She shall bring forth a son. If the first part of what is said was true, the next part must be real, must be factual, must be true. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You call him Jesus. When you call him Jesus, you call him Savior. All the sins we have committed. When we talk of sins, he's talking about things we do against God. Number one. Speak against God. Number one our actions, our habits that are contrary to the pleasure of God. Number two, things we do against our neighbors that offend our neighbors, that disturb our neighbors. We call them anti-social behavior. It hurts others. It doesn't help other people. And nobody will say, I've never done anything to hurt my neighbor. I've never done anything that will displease God. Number one, the things we do against God. Number two, the things we do against our neighbors. 
Number three, the things we do against our very selves. If somebody says, I'm not hurting anybody. Are you not hurting yourself? I'm smoking, I'm not hurting anybody. Are you not hurting yourself? I'm drinking, I know that they talk about drunkenness, but it's me. But are you not hurting yourself? Your greed. That is, you walk like an elephant, you eat like an ant. Are you not hurting yourself? The things we do against ourselves. The sin that drive us and hurry us up to premature death and to untimely death. The way we use our tongue, how we use our ears, how we use our mouth. The things we do with our hands that God says, that's not the purpose of the hand I give you. It's not to hurt other people. It's not to destroy other people. And it is not to destroy yourself. Those are the things that are called sins. Against God, sin. Against your neighbor, sin. Against yourself, sin. And the soul that sinneth, it shall die. It's a built-in process of sowing and reaping. That as you sow the wild oath, you also reap the sounds and the thistles. As you sow the wind, you reap the wild wind. Because what you reap, the harvest is always greater than what you sow. And now, a lot of seeds that piled up. The pile against your first sin, against God is so high, it almost reaches to the heavens. And the ones you've done against your neighbor, one, two, three neighbors, and four neighbors, and five, and almost everybody, you know, somebody has somewhat against you. It reaches up to the heavens. And the seeds you've seen against yourself. It's like a heavy load upon you that bows you down and you cannot run the race of life. There's so much guilt and condemnation. But the plan of God's salvation that says, I can set you free. I can forgive you. Because I sent Jesus Christ to bear your punishment. Just come by faith. And as you believe, things will change in your life. Tonight I announce that plan of salvation unto you. That salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the plan, and that plan is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Our sin also brought sicknesses into the world. Before sin entered the world, before sin entered the world, there was no sickness. And then before the fall, did not know what you call sickness, demonic attack, oppression, hospital, whatever. Adam, 
The chapter seven came that sickness also arrived. Because it's the consequence, is the fruit, is the harvest of the sowing of sin. And as the Almighty God has brought solution to the problem of sin, so He has brought solution to the problem of sickness. Double problem, double solution. Everything that the devil has brought into this world through our anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-social, anti-spiritual activities, Jesus Christ is going to solve the problem tonight. <laughs> 